We're just going to keep moving through these and kind of show step by step what was added because that's probably the most gentle way of doing it. There's a few big jumps here and there at certain points in time, but for the most part, this should be pretty gradual. If we need to break it up at some point, then we'll do so. Not a whole lot was added in 0.d of the uh, pre-release. So comments were added in this version. If you've done other coding before, you should be pretty familiar with comments. They're essentially there for the coder, for the programmer, for whoever is creating the document, creating the program, the code, whatnot. If you look at the page itself, you'll see there's nothing actually being displayed. It says comment element, and it shows a tag there, but there's nothing above where it should actually be displayed. And that's essentially the point of comments. They don't actually show anything. They're like just a, a container that you can put information in to keep your things organized, to remind you what you're working on, to put in little notes about updates. Um, it's, it's stuff for you. It's not for the person viewing the page. It's for the person viewing the code. And that being said, actually, there are a few websites that have played with uh, this idea. So if we just go to Flickr's page and review the page source, let's see if it's still here. There we go. In there, in a comment code, they actually made like some little ASCII art for their page. And they even put here that if you're looking at their code, then maybe you're interested in the type of uh, jobs they have available. We'll start using comments in our code from now on, now that we've mentioned it. The next elements that they added are the header and body tags, the header and body elements. These are also containers. They don't show any sort of a visual display. Basically, they're just used to organize stuff. So we already had the title element, right? And that shows like things in the tabs or actually on the top of the browser itself, depending on what browser you're using and how old the browser is. And that's not really part of the document itself, right? I mean, it is, but it's not in the document. It's just sort of about the document. And that's kind of the idea between like header and body. The stuff in the header is like information about the file, but not the content of the file itself. The stuff in the body is the content of the file. So we sort of organize stuff in that way. And you can see here in my example, I have the title inside of the header. Of course, you close the title before you close the header element. So, you know, if you open a tag inside of a tag, you close it before you close the other one. And then the rest is in the body tag. So all of this here, and that's this bit here. I did have to change things a little bit because I didn't want to keep looping by showing like more of the same code over and over again inside of this, because that's what would happen, right? I also had to change this to use listing when I actually used XMP to wrap all of this in because if I close the XMP tag here, then it would not show the closing body tag. There's also the pre-element that was added, and it's for pre-formatted text. It's not really very interesting because we've already talked about the XMP element, which I just mentioned, and we've talked about the listing element, which I just also mentioned here. And so what's the point of the pre-element? It's basically the listing element. It doesn't really do anything different. You can see it doesn't display code, so like, that hyperlink there is active, and it skipped these ones down here, these pretend tags that I made. It is keeping the formatting, so it's, it's basically the listing element. As far as modern design goes, we still use this pre-element, but the listing element has been faded out. So basically, the listing element that you were playing with, go ahead and just replace it with this pre-element. And you might think, well, then why did I bother learning the listing element? And that's okay. That's kind of how web design goes. If you're really like stuck on learning how to do things one way and never updating it, never changing it, web design's a tough thing to learn because it's constantly changing every few years. So you can just think of these little switches that we're gonna go through as, as practice, so to speak. Now we've already talked about anchors. Anchors are your hyperlinks. And we've already played with these some, right? So they added a new attribute and that's the type attribute. And you can see that here. Basically the type attribute is to tell the browser what type of document you're linking to. So are you linking to a page? Like I just linked to it itself, so not impressive. Or are you linking to like an image, like this giraffe head that's a little large? So that's, that's all that does. Now do you have to use it? No, you don't have to use it. But there's not much information about it really. I mean, it's nice. It's nice to know what type it is, I suppose. But the user can't see this. Only the browser can see this. 
I'm thinking it might be useful with assistive technology. So maybe if someone is using a screen reader or they have some sort of other assistive software, maybe it will tell them what the link is before they click on it or before they tell it to click on it. But I couldn't find any confirmation for that as well. There are some other attributes in the anchor elements later on that we'll discuss that are used for assistive technology, but I couldn't find that verified here. Maybe it was just a feature that was never really added on. You could also think maybe that if it's like an image type or something, some sort of file that you might download, that that would like prompt the browser to download it, but that wasn't really done either. They ended up adding a new attribute more recently for that. So I suppose this is a nice attribute, I guess, but it doesn't really do anything. Anyway, that's um, that's actually it. They didn't add a whole lot of new stuff in that one. Now the next version does have quite a few new things that we will cover, and then after that we're getting into the first actual full release, HTML1, and no longer in these sort of beta versions.